everybody, this is Mr. Matthew here uh, with the fourth and final video for Honors Biology Unit 1. Um, and in this case, we're going to talk about ecosystems and how they change over time. In this video, we're going to talk specifically on two concepts. One, we're going to talk about the idea of succession, and then we're going to move on and talk specifically about how our New England ecosystem has changed over time. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the idea of <clears throat> primary and secondary succession. So before I get into the difference between the two, uh, let's talk about the concept of succession. And succession is the idea that over time, the organisms that live in a given area are going to change and alter the conditions of that ecosystem. And as a result, they're going to prepare it so that other organisms will be able to follow up and move in and take advantage of the conditions that are present. Now, the example that's up here in front of us shows a sort of a rocky uh, diagram or a rocky area over on the side. And then we have some small plants that come in in step two, and then some slightly larger plants in three, and then some larger plants in four. And as you can see, as we move to five and six and seven, and then ultimately eight, we readily see these plants getting larger and larger. And you might be thinking, well, how did the one plant prepare the other one? Well, the first organisms that came in likely broke down some barren rock, and they, that is an example of primary succession. So if you look in the bottom left, we see that there is this like volcanic island, and we see some plants that are there. Well, how did those get there? Well, likely there were some mosses and some lichen and some other organisms that landed here first. They created an initial soil structure by growing in a very tough, rugged environment, they altered the rocky conditions, started to establish some initial soil. Following that, then you had some organisms that could come in and dig deeper roots and further turned over the, the rock and created a deeper soil structure. This gave rise eventually to some shrubs and then to some small trees and then ultimately larger trees. And so that first step of changing the initial environment, we call that primary succession. And then the changes after that point are going to be forms of secondary succession. <clears throat> if you look in the bottom diagram that we have and then the diagram over the right, what we see here is that this is a point where there was a forest fire um, initially and then a time after that forest fire. And this is another example of secondary succession where a fire came along, burned a lot of underbrush, burned a lot of these trees, because of that burning, it actually changed the nature of soil. It added some nutrients to the soil. And then, um, you know, maybe a year later, you come back to that same area and you'll see a lot of green plants that are there. They are now getting access to light that was previously blocked by the canopy before the fire. And they're also benefiting from the uh, nutrients that were brought into the soil as a result of the fire that occurred. And so this is an example of a secondary succession event. Um, I always like to think of the idea of a glass of milk. Um, if you take a glass of milk and you put it out on the counter and you let it sit for a while, what ends up happening is that over time, the milk goes, you know, first it goes sour and then it gets all chunky and it goes through all of these changes over a few weeks in time. And the reason for that is that at, over time, bacteria colonize it. And the first bacteria that colonize it and turn that into an acidic environment, those are different than the ones that make the the milk turn into a chunky condition later on. But those first bacteria that come in acidify that milk, and then that acidic environment is prime for the bugs that come in later. Um, this is also much more rapidly than, you know, having a volcano build an island and then waiting for that volcanic island to go through all these categories of succession. Though it might be a little grosser. All right, so let's take a look and talk about New England. Now, obviously, when we talk about New England, we are not a volcanic island, so we're not looking at primary succession here. But we do know that over time, we have gone through a lot of great changes. So if you were to go back to New England, say, 500 years ago, 600 years ago, um, it wasn't to say there were not people here, but there were a lot fewer people here. And by and large, there were large stands of um, established trees. And what we found is that as um, European settlers came over, they cut down large swaths of those trees. And as a result, they initially cleared them um, for farming. And there were many phases where we went from large old growth forests to lots and lots of farmland. 
Now, if you've been around other parts of the United States, you know that New England is not the greatest place in the world for farming because we have cold winters and they're basically just areas where you can sustain crops for much longer than you can throughout New England. And so as people moved west and the growing of food throughout uh, the United States moved out of the Northeast, we tended to see a lot of trees come back. And so now what we'll find is when we come along and we look at um, the areas like an Ackman or a Boxborough, yes, we still see farms that are around, but for the most part, we've seen a lot of growth back into those areas by trees. And we'll also see remnants of the once divided up farmland like this stone wall that runs through this. As you guys go out and complete your term one project, one of the things that you're going to be asked to do is look at how the New England ecosystems have changed over time. And you will go back and look at sort of colonial impacts in some of those settlers, but you're also going to be looked, looking back to much longer ago, what are some geological events that may have shaped um, the ecosystem, moving back to times when glaciers came through and they then went through a process of succession following uh, the movement of glaciers. So uh, we'll do an activity in class where you will look at how ecosystems change over time and specifically in New England. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a taste for that and how it relates to succession.